Welcome to the channel, I'm Jay Malone. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a YouTube thumbnail, but don't click off. If you're not interested in YouTube thumbnails, you can use this same method for advertisements, for business cards, other things that you can use this method of editing for. If you're new to the channel and you would like to learn more about photography, drones, technology, and other related things, then please consider hitting the subscribe button. When you do, tap the little bell icon next to it. That way you don't miss anything. This video is actually by request. I've had several people say, hey Jay, how do you edit those thumbnails? How do you make them look like that? So guess what? Today, I'm gonna share my secrets with you. Okay, maybe it's not so much of a big secret, but anyways, I'll share my technique with you. So let's edit the thumbnail of this video together so you can see exactly how I do it. You'll notice that most of my videos actually have me in the thumbnail. That's because I want my videos to be recognizable. When people are scrolling through their subscription page, I want someone to say, hey, there's Jay's video. I wanna click on that video. And to get that image of myself, I could take a photograph. I could have someone help me take a photograph. But most often, I actually just use this video and grab a still image from it. So for example, I would step back here and I would look at my monitor, my little screen beside the camera to make sure that I'm positioned right. I would kind of get in the frame here and then I'm gonna make sure and look at my lens because I, I don't want my eyes to be over at the screen. So get where you want to be and then look at the lens. Make sure you stay still for just a minute. That'll give you the best image to work with. The rest of this thumbnail will be done in Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop. So let's jump over to the computer and get to editing this thumbnail. All right, I am using Adobe Premiere Pro CC to edit with, and I have my footage loaded here, and I've uh, disabled or muted the audio, so you're not hearing me scrub through this audio. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna scrub through and find that spot where I stopped or where I paused, or if you just want to grab a screen grab, find wherever that you're looking for to get a good screenshot. And you'll notice right underneath this little program window uh, you'll see this button that looks like a camera that says export frame. If for some reason that is not there, uh, there's a couple different things to try. First grab this and make sure that you're uh, scooted over enough. You can see if I shrink it down, it disappears. Uh, make sure that you're wide enough that it's gonna show up. If it's still not there, um, you can click on the little plus button and then you should be able to find it. Export frame, click on it tell it okay and that will add it to your little window there. So when you have your playhead where you want it and the frame that you're wanting to capture, click on the button. You'll notice it is going to export it here and it'll give you a file name. If you want to change the name, you can. Um, it'll also tell you the path that it is going to be saving this picture to. So uh, make sure that you know where that is at so you can go find it later. Uh, I'm going to just name this frame grab just so I'll have a name on here to find it easily and then uh, tell it okay. Now it saved that screen grab for me and that's all I need Premiere Pro for. So now I'm gonna close Premiere Pro and we're gonna jump over to Photoshop. Now we're in Photoshop. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 and we want to first create a blank document. If you have a saved preset, you can use one of those as I have these thumbnail presets, but we're just going to say that you don't and we're gonna create a new one. We're gonna create a document that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So make sure and put those numbers in there. Go ahead and tell it to create. And as you can see, we have just a blank canvas to start working with. The first thing I want to do is work on that picture of myself. So I'm gonna open my finder window and navigate to where that picture was saved. You can actually just uh, grab that picture and drag it into Photoshop. And we'll place it here on the screen where it needs to go. To get started with this edit, the first thing I would do is apply a layer mask. And if you click on, or if you'll hover over down on the bottom over here, you'll see where it says add layer mask. And if you click on that, You'll notice a little white um, square out beside this. That is your mask. It's white, so basically it's saying everything is revealed. And if you'll come over here to the tools palette and click on your brush, um, you can see it's a small brush. I'm gonna make this brush larger now. Um, 
and we want to make sure it's kind of a hard edge so yes it's a hard edge brush uh, if I am painting I've got the color black selected and when I paint with that you can see that it, it looks like it's painting white but basically what it is doing is it is masking out the image you can see where it's black down here in this mask now let's create another layer in between these two I'll click on here and create a solid color I'm gonna pick something like red so as you can see now we have uh, our background layer a color layer and our frame grab layer and now when we go back to the mask make sure you click on the little white square grab your paintbrush the more that you paint out um, the more that's going to be revealed underneath it I always use this masking option instead of deleting um, or instead of painting with a color and here's the reason why if I was painting this out and all of a sudden I got too much went over this all I have to do is change the color uh, from black to white and then you paint back on the area paint it in white so that's the uh, the luxury of using this mask but we're going to switch back to black and continue masking this out and usually what I do is grab this big brush and go over as much as I can kind of as close as I can feel comfortable with and uh, get as much of it knocked out with this big brush as possible then I'm fixing to zoom in all right, let's zoom in on this image and I'm going to decrease the size of my brush now. And as you can see, the brush is a lot smaller. You may want to zoom into your image more, decrease the size even closer. And I just come along here and I start painting this mask in right up close to my skin or my glasses, whatever it is that I am painting against. And I continue going around this kind of as close as I can and as accurate as possible this is a thumbnail image it's going to be small so you don't have to worry about it being perfect um, as you can see I got into my shirt a little bit but honestly when you look at it I don't think it's going to make much of a difference um, you want to try to keep your line straight so if you're clicked here you can actually shift click and come along there and you can see how it created a straight line That'll save you some time if you have a lot of straight lines to work with. Um, I actually go around this. I try to kind of go, you know, the best that I can, uh, get, get it accurate. But yet, you know, if it's not perfect, you can always go clean it up later. Or like I said, it's going to be a small YouTube thumbnail, so um, you may not have to worry about it. But I'm fixing to speed up this process here. Um, you'll see me zooming way in and shrinking my brush down for some of these spots like this. And you just wanna make sure that you get everything that you can uh, mask out all the way around yourself. So let's speed this process up and you can watch how I go through here. I probably spent more time on this thumbnail edit than I needed to. Um, you'll see later that you really don't have to be as perfect, as accurate. I'm just used to editing photos and other things, so I'm usually one to try to get it as accurate as I can. Okay, as I'm finishing up this mask, uh, I know someone will say, well, couldn't you have you just used a selection tool? And yeah, you probably could have, but I just have found with the, the way that I edit these thumbnails and what works best for me is just to use this masking option. Um, it, it works better than, than using the selection tool, in my opinion. Now that we have this image masked out the way that we think it looks good, what I would do is go over here and right click on this frame grab layer. And when you do that, you will see blending options at the top. Click on blending options and uh, you can go down to something maybe like outer glow. I use outer glow quite a lot. And when I click on that, you'll see you can make different adjustments with the opacity, the size of it, um, but yeah, you can see there uh, the difference that you can do with outer glow. I know you see these spots that are over here, but that's fine. Go ahead and click OK. And now what we want to do is we want to zoom back into this image, click on our mask again, and then use that black paintbrush because that is areas that we actually missed. And uh, those will show up once you do this outer glow or stroke, uh, you'll, you'll see that. So 
And you can see now that we have this outer glow, you can clean up some of these areas where you left a little too much. Uh, so it really shows up better once you kind of put this outer glow on here and we'll let you paint some of these out and exactly see how close that you need to get. If you want to get accurate, this is the way to do it. If you're not too worried about it, then you could probably skip this step and a small thumbnail wouldn't really show this up. Now that we have this looking better, make sure and click on the top layer. Uh, don't be selected onto the mask, just make sure you're selecting that layer. Then go grab the move tool. I have it located at the top of my uh, tool panel here, but um, just click on that move tool and you can grab this layer and move it around. And you can see now how we have everything masked out. I'm actually gonna put it over here onto the side. I'm gonna grab the text tool, click over here on the T, and I'm gonna select somewhere here. I wanna make sure I have this centered for now, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the center text button. I'm gonna type out make cool thumbnails. You can see now that we have the black text, you can increase the size of that. Um, you can move your text around. We're going to put this on a couple different lines. We're gonna increase the size of these top two lines. Um, work on this text again. Now we have some text looking a little bit better. We're gonna work on the size of this. I'm just gonna go Control T to transform and um, just kind of position this where I think it looks okay. Uh, I'm going to do this for now. I'm gonna go back to my layer of myself, this image of me, and I'm gonna scoot it over some. You can actually uh, Control T and you can transform this if you want to move this around. Um, however you wanna do it, now that you have it masked out, you have a lot of options. Um, as you can see now, it's actually showing a border around this uh, now that we have transformed it. So click back over onto your mask, grab your paintbrush again, and all you need to do is paint over that to make sure that you have that line gone as well. Now we're gonna make this text pop a little bit better, so go back to your text layer. We're gonna right click on our text layer and go to blending options. And let's choose stroke here, change the color from black to white. And then we're going to change the position from the inside to the outside and increase the size of the stroke. There we have something that kind of makes it pop there. Um, you might also want to add a little bit of a drop shadow. That's way too much, so adjust the size down. Uh, there we have something I think that looks pretty cool. And um, we're actually going to get rid of this red background. Um, whatever color background that you really want to use, you can double click on that there and just change the color, change it to something blue. Um, let's actually do that. Let's, let's choose a blue color for right now and let's see how this text looks on here. We're going to grab our text tool again. We're gonna highlight this word cool. I'm gonna change the color from black uh, we're going to change it from black to red. So yeah, we want something that uh, stands out a little bit there. So make cool thumbnails. Now that I take a look at this, I'm actually going to change the word cool to YouTube. So let's just type YouTube. Make YouTube thumbnails. Now we need to adjust the size of this. So highlight just that text. And let's work on our text size there. Bring it down, um, something like that. and. Yeah, there we go. Now that I've got that text changed, you can move it around. I'm gonna grab this uh, layer myself again, and I'm going to Control T, and I'm gonna transform this and work on the position of this here again. So yeah, I'll get myself down there where I think it looks better. Grab this text, move the text up, and there we have it. If you wanna do something a little bit different with the background, you could actually drop an image in behind this picture of yourself or a picture of a person here. I'm actually going to go down here underneath that layer and I'm going to create a new layer. So now I have a blank layer created here. And I wanna do some selecting color. So I'm gonna click on this foreground color and I'll select this blue color here that I'm using. Um, and then I'll uh, kinda choose a little bit lighter blue I'll say I'll go with that and then I'll click on the black or the background color and um, then what I normally like to do is pick something a little bit darker. So, so we'll go with the darker blue 
Now we have two different variations of blue here and we're going to create a gradient layer now. So go up here to the gradient tool. You can see if you right click, you can choose gradient paint bucket, but we're gonna choose the gradient tool. Now go up above that and you'll see here, you can choose different style of gradients. We actually want both colors there to show up. So make sure the foreground to background is selected. And while you're on this blank layer over here, now just click in the middle of your screen and drag out this line and let it go. You'll see how it creates that cool gradient. If you don't like how that looks, click and drag it a different direction. Uh, just play around with it until you get something that you like. I actually think I like the lighter color up there. I think it works best. I actually have a graphic that I use for my border. So let's go over here to the layer palette and let's make sure we're on the very top layer and then go up to a graphic that you have saved if it's something that you want to use and drop it in and we'll reposition that where it needs to be. It has my own branding on it, it has a picture of me, you have a color a gradient background color and text that I think pops pretty well off of that, stands out. Play around with different color text to see what works best for you and that's pretty much how I would make a YouTube thumbnail. I usually save this as a layered file so I would go file save as and choose your location that you want to save it in. I usually save it as thumbnail one just in case I want to make changes to it. And now I have the layered file saved. Speaking of making changes, I decided to play around with the text a little bit and in fact I even used a different screen grab um, because I think this may fit it just a little bit better. Um, now once you've done that, go back and save that as a second option. Um, that way you always have both of these options to fall back on if you need to edit those later. Once you're happy with that, you can flatten the image. Go to Layer, Flatten. Once you've got it flattened, go to File, Save As, and change this to JPEG. And save that, Thumbnail to JPEG, and there you have it. That is the file that you would want to upload to YouTube, and it's pretty much that easy. And there you have it guys, that's how I edit my thumbnails. There are several different ways that you could go about editing a thumbnail. Uh, there's other programs that you can use, but I'm just familiar with Adobe products, so that's what I use. And don't think you have to create your thumbnail just like this one uh, for it to be appealing to people. Everyone has their own style preference. This was just the way that I like to create thumbnails. But figure out your style or your look that you're going for, and then use some of these methods to create your own. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if this video was helpful to you or not. I'm hoping this video was helpful. If it was, hit that thumbs up. That would let me know that you enjoyed it and I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, God bless.